So on most keyboards, um, you can see they tune it to 440 hertz for the key of, of, of C, yeah? This is C. We're going to um, talk about the tones, the FAC. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just tune that to 432 instead of the 440. You can ch tune your entire instrument to, to a different... Um, to different hertz like which is the resonance frequency of the planet um, known as the Schumann resonance so that I've just done so then when we come out of that now go back to the okay so right let's talk about these tones vibration and frequencies when we're dealing with music um, you have C D E F. The musical alphabet only goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and that's it, right? So um, this is where you would, well, most people would start from C, so C, D, E, F, G, and then you carry on to A, B, and then C, right? So these would be like your eight notes, so this is where you go Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Um, and they've got numbers as well. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The eight is the same as the one. So this is referred to as the octave. Yeah. And it just starts again. So when we look at the keyboard, you see that you go from, if you start from C, because you can start anywhere. So we could go from A to A, right? So we could go from A to A. And that will still give you eight notes, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you're back to the eight. The reason we start on the A is just because people who are used to the alphabet, you know, the normal English alphabet has how many letters in it? Do you know? 25. 26. 26. Excellent. A young student is very smart. Right, so 26 letters. Most children would learn the alphabet by the time they're like two, three years old. Right, so in music, the musical alphabet only has seven letters. So if you can learn 26 at two years old, you should be able to learn the, um, the, the seven plus the octave gives you eight. Now, we talk about 9E for all the time. We say 9999. Nine, nine, nine. People are like, well, where's the ninth number? Well, the ninth number is when you play all of these numbers together. That gives you that sound of all of them together. That's what gives you the nine, yeah? But that's only in terms of the tone. Now, I'm, I, might, I might go a little bit um, complicated for some people, but let's talk about our tones. So we say that our tones are F because F deals with the frequency of the, the planet. A deals with the frequency of your body, right? And then C deals with the frequency of the cosmos. And that's why we say our tones are FAC. And once you're in tune with these frequencies, then you're in tune with your body, which is in tune with the planet, which is then in tune with nature and the cosmos. So what we're gonna look at today, so in the musical alphabet, you can combine different notes to form what we call harmony, right? So harmony is when you play, people say harmony is when you play three notes um, or more, but it's actually two notes because you can have chords called power chords or sus chords, um, which are two notes. So I say chords are really two or more notes played together gives you harmony. When you play them separately, it gives you melody. So all the songs in the world that you've ever heard are literally written from these seven notes. Now, you do have extensions, um, meaning that you can actually keep going to nine, um, let's say we carried on with the numbers here, so you'd have nine, 11, and 13 chords as well, right? I'll show that when we look at the keyboard, because when you're forming harmony, you can add different notes from the scale. So this C to 
C is like, if we're looking at the, the first, the number one is normally the root, right? So this would be like your root chord, if we're in the key of C. Because C is the um, easiest key to kind of work with in, in music because it's all the white notes on the keyboard and we'll look at that in a minute. So you'd go, um, the one is C, the two is the D, the three is the E. So when you're forming um, chords, as I said before, which is three notes played together, for example, you can have a major or a minor. Now, major, you see like a capital M for major, um, or you can have actually like, it's written out like that, major. And for minor, you will have a small m, where you have like it written like, like that, minor. The difference is that the major tones or the major chords are more happy and the minor one's a little bit more sad. So to form a major triad, you would take the one, the three, and the five, and that will give you a major. The, I haven't talked about sharps and flats because we'll look at that on the keyboard, it's a little bit more complicated, but sharps and flats are when you take a note, let's say, let's say C, and you go up a semitone, and it's, you know, the sharp signal um, symbol is that. So that becomes a C sharp, and then th that will be in between the C and the D. But we'll come back to that. And if you did the opposite, where you took a note and you flattened it, um, you would get... Technically, there isn't a C flat because it becomes a B, so I'll use another note. Say, like, if you took an A and you flattened it, that would become a flat, and that's the symbol that you, you, you'd use for the A flat. And we'll look at that in a minute. So I know it's been a lot of information, if you're not familiar with this, but when we look at it on an instrument, on the keyboard, um, it will make more sense. So when you're forming a major chord, you would take the one, the three, and the five. And if you're forming a minor chord, yeah, which is um, this side, so this, this is minor, and these are majors, yeah? If you're forming a minor chord, all you have to do is flatten the third to give you a, a triad. We say triad because it's one, two, three. Yeah, three notes, um, which in the major scale will be the one, the three, and the five. And when you're forming a minor chord, you take the one and then you'd flatten the third and then you also have the fifth um, to give you a minor or a sad type of sound. So let's have a look at that on the keyboard. So the first thing we do in terms of music, in terms of the vibrations and the frequencies, is that each note is tuned and has a vibration. So on the, on the keyboard, we're going to go um, from C to C, so this is C to C, like I was saying, one, two, three. and then we'll start again, backwards, right, so those are your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then back to the C, and then it starts again, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, what I was saying is that if you took the one, which in the key of C major, will be one, miss out the two, and then you take the three, miss out the four and take the five, you get these three. This is what we call the C major. Now, to make it a minor, you flat the third. See, that's, that's making it a flat because I'm going one semitone down, so to, you get this. And the root's always going to be C. See, that sounds different than this major, which is more happy. Yeah? So, in our, um, in Wu Sabat, our tones are F, A, and C. Remember, we said C, D, E, F, G, then the A, B, and then the C. All right, 
I don't want to play in the key of F because it's a, it might be a little bit more complicated for people to grasp. But if we stay in the key of C, which is just all the white notes, you can then start to take these notes and play melodies um, when you single notes like That's just a melody, right? But if I'm playing chords, this would be like a D minor, and it's also the number two in the key of C, and then the one, sorry, right, let's do that again. The one, one to the two, which is a minor, And, and you can keep going and play like three, four, and th that's four, and then the five, you could play five, the six, then you're back to the, you know, you're back to the seven, but most people don't play the seven, which is a diminished, they will play a flat seven, yeah, and then, back to the C if you wanted to carry on. So now you could put those eight notes coupled with the chords that go with those, even though I'm playing more complicated chords, right? So I could play like a C major, like triad. And then the D, E, F, G, which is the fifth, six, and then this seven diminished, which sounds funny, right? More scary. You hear this in like horror movies. And I'm just playing three notes, but if I added the seventh, right, you get seventh chords. Then if I added the, the ninth, you get that ninth, but I was doing what you call inverting it. Um, Inversions, um, it's like if I took these three chords and I took the C and I played it at the top, I've just inverted it. And then I can take the E and play it here. So I've inverted it and then back to the root position if you're only using three chords, right? So um, if you're using seventh chord, you have a seventh. Um, there are many seven chords and it can be a bit confusing if you don't know what you're doing initially. So like you can have like a major seventh, minor seventh or, or dominant seventh. The different seventh chords, but don't worry about that for now. Um, but yeah, what I was doing is playing actually ninth chords, which is I added the ninth. Yeah, but I inverted it. So and I was playing what we would call diatonic, meaning diatonic is I just moving from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the scale or the key of C. But I was using ninth chord, so I kind of went from the C, then I went to the two, and then I kind of played the, the, the three, the four, five, and then back to the... So really, that's all you need in terms of um, to, to write hit songs, play music, but the tones, vibrations, and frequency are very important because, as we say, the F, A, C, which actually forms a, a major triad in the key of F major, are our tones and you can move along the keyboard to find what resonates with you like what what tone do you like like um, when you're going down the keyboard which tone you feel more kind of closest to or it makes you feel good or the vibration so yeah um, when we're dealing with these tones vibrations and frequency especially when you're making music it's important to know that um, certain frequencies are more 
harmonious and peaceful and others are more destructive. And that's why we, like, you know, we use those tones. And different types of music will play um, using different tones. So if you listen to, like, Eastern music, you're going to have different tones and vibrations than, you know, like, um, Western music. But I hope that's given you a, a quick taste um, about music because music is universal, right? Music is a language that you can use to communicate with other musicians and it doesn't matter what the instrument is, um, it will always, you know, like a music, different, musician, different musicians will be able to um, communicate because once you know, like the number system, so on the board here where I had these numbers, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can then play different types of music using um, what we call chord progressions. Yeah, so, you know, like um, two, five, one. So we could play a two, five, one, and that's quite common in most music, especially jazz music. And it's also called a turnaround because to get back to the one, you'd go two, five, then one. But there are other, um, other progressions uh, a progression is like, like I said, the number system. So if a musician knew the number system, all they need to know is that in the key of, say, C major, um, without the flat, in the key of C major, the notes would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And if we were playing a 2, 5, 1, all I have to say to the musician is 2, 5, 1, and they will know to play D, G. The G is really a dominant... The, yeah, the G is really a dominant, um, but that, again, I don't want to go too complicated. In fact, when we do more um, on more lessons on the tones, vibrations, and frequencies, we can go into more detail. But musicians and people who have studied music will know what I'm talking about, and it's important to learn music. Yes, you can play by ear, and it's good for you to know the tones and vibrations, but knowing the theory behind it also helps you so that you're not just doing it kind of by luck. You kind of know what you're doing. So the musical alphabet, to summarise everything, like I mentioned before in other videos, that um, everything has building blocks. So like when we learn in a language, we have the alphabet. And we take the alphabet to form words. We take the words to form you know, sentences. And then the sentences to form paragraphs the paragraphs to form chapters and then you get a book. So the bigger you go, um, you kind of start with the small building blocks and then it gets more vocabulary or more complicated. The same with music. The building blocks are the musical alphabet starting, you know, from A to G because there aren't any letters after that. There's no, like, H, for example, as in the normal alphabet. So those notes are your musical alphabet then you use those to build a scale, like in the C major scale. And from the C major scale, then you can then take the notes of that scale to form your majors and your minor chords. And the major is the one, three, and the five. The minor is the one with the flat third and the five. Then you can start to build and add more extensions by adding more notes. So. You can, you can start to build by adding more notes, like adding the seventh, which will give you the seventh chords. Same thing, you can have a seventh major, seventh minor, and other flavors of seventh, like, you know, the dominant, etc. Then you can add another note, like the ninth, um, which gives you even a more enhanced harmonic sound. And then finally, you can add the thirteenth. One of the questions people always ask is like, why does it stop at 13 and not like 14, 15, 16? It's because you're moving in thirds. Um, when you go from one to three, that's a third. Um, one, two, three. And then when you move from three to five, that's another third. And you move from five to seven, that's another third. One, two, three. And then you move from seven to eight, that's another third. And then finally you move from nine to 13. That's another third, because if you carried on from that 13th note, you're just going to end up back to the C. That's why it stops at 13th.
But once you know the formula or the musical alphabet and you know the difference between majors and minors and the extensions by adding more notes, your music becomes a lot more colourful and the, you know, the different genres of music will use different progressions. The progressions is like how you're moving. So we're moving from, you know, you can make any combinations of movements. So you could go one, two, three, four, and that could be a song. You can go one, um, three, four, that's another song. You can go four, six. So if a musician knows this, I've just given you guys some heavy jewels there, right? So learn this. And when you're playing in a band or playing with other people, you just say, all right, we're going to play, um, I don't know, um, four, six. And everyone knows, well, right, if we're in the key of C, a four is going to be an F. So everybody will play F and then you move to the six. And that's in the key of um, C, that will be an A minor. That's something I didn't cover. So each one of these will have like the, the majors and minors um, degrees. So for example, one will be a major, two will be a minor, three will be a minor, four major, five is a major, but we say dominant, six is a minor, seventh is going to be your diminished, and then you kind of go back to the cycle. So when it comes to tones, vibration and frequency, we actually have a scroll, an actual fact called um, tones, vibrational frequencies and DNA because it actually affects your DNA. When you're listening to sounds and music, it actually affects your DNA. So you have to think to yourself, are you listening to the right types of music that are making your vibration negative or positive? You know, so, you know, like music that is going to be harmful to you is going to have really bad frequencies and um, the one that's going to be good for you is going to be much calm and beautiful music okay so yeah i hope that's helped you to learn a bit more about frequencies vibrations my, my phone's going so i think that's the end of that class uh, until the next one tune into osm vision and get more because we've got so much more to share with you peace